Good morning, true crime friends. How you doing? Today is Tuesday. Wait, I always try to memorize the date and then I never actually do. Uh, Tuesday, April the 23rd, 2024. Look, um, you know, Granny Tiffany down there in Oklahoma, the panhandle of Oklahoma, learning true crime, like being into true crime is helping me to learn geography. Not real specific geography, but geography in general. I know where Oklahoma is. You're welcome. Anyway, so, um, Tiffany, who does not like to be called Granny, so of course the entire world is now calling her Granny. Tiffany, Tiffany Adams, Tiffany with the one F because two Fs will be superfluous, killed, uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, you can't say the kill word over here on the tubes of you. Unfortunately, unalived her daughter-in-law, and as we know, her original plan was to drop an anvil through the windshield, because that happens. What is wrong with these people? Anyway, so she was like, I was trying to drop this anvil and then we missed and then it was too heavy to pick up and like it created a whole situation. So they just got guns and did it the old fashioned way. Apparently, they she unfortunately unalived her daughter-in-law and her daughter-in-law's friend. Okay, that's terrible, but all right. Here's the thing about this story that is, I mean, there's a lot of things about this story that are fascinating. This woman um, went on some rented land. Her boyfriend, Tad, was renting this piece of land. And it was like, hey, landlord, listen, um, we just going to dig a hole over here because we have some um, some trees and stuff. We're doing um, natural farming type things. So don't mind us. We're going to dig a hole. And so they dug a hole 10 feet deep. Listen, that's deeper than most swimming pools. 10 feet. Also, they dug a hole 10 feet down to put these bodies. Most people dig like a two or three foot, 10 feet. They had no intention for these people to be found again. This is what I don't understand. If you're going to go through the, I mean, they had equipment and stuff to do. If they wasn't out there with shovels, that would have taken all day. They had like a, a excavator or a back hole or a something farming related, whatever. They used farming equipment to dig a hole 10 feet deep. They put the bodies in there and then they put the dirt back and then they put hay on top of it so that the cows would go and stomp around and you wouldn't be able to tell that the dirt was, um, was, was disturbed there. That is fascinating. Is this half a criminal mastermind? My answer to that is no. And let me tell you why. Number one, she had a burner phone and she's like, I'm so smart. I was down there at the Walmart murder aisle and I got the burner phone. Oh yes, we got the two pack because you know, saving money and stuff. They got two, two packs of burner phones and they turned them on and they only use the burner phones for these crimes. Only, um the the FBI or the, uh, the whoever was over there was able to track the cell phone pings on your burner phone because here's the thing when you have a burner phone and you're and you're um burying people 10 feet underground with putting hay on top and doing all the things you should maybe turn the phone off I, I'm not trying to help criminals here I'm not I'm just saying you should maybe turn the phone off so there was like mm -hmm, you went through all of that and then the pings told us exactly where you were here's the other thing they disposed of the car um, and there was b bodily fluids all over the place. M maybe you should have put the car also in the hole. Is a car, no, most cars are not 10 feet tall. So this is what I'm thinking. If you could put the unfortunately unalive people in the hole, why wouldn't you also just put the car in the hole? I don't understand. I guess a car hole would have, would have to be bigger than a body, but you had digging equipment. I have questions. This, they were good at unaliving. They were not great at unaliving. Also, the plan of just like having an anvil fall through the windshield, that was just stupid. I mean, I thought they were criminal masterminds. Maybe they just got lucky. Maybe they're just horrible and evil. And that, that, that might be the answer to all of this. Also, this morning, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on to the court TV and I'm going to watch the recap of what happened yesterday in the trial of uh, the state of wherever he is, Idaho to Iowa. Clearly, I have not learned geography that well because I can never remember where this boy is from. But um, he's over there someplace. Um, he, th They were talking about the trial and I was like, okay, this trial is far too boring for me to watch like the whole thing so i cheat by watching the recap on the court tv when i get up in the morning okay fine and so i'm watching it and i'm like okay okay i'm making my notes whatever figuring out everything and they have like you know three little different experts in the little boxes with the vinnie politan hey vinnie how you doing you're absolutely not watching it so they have the three little experts over there and the experts are giving their opinion and then i hear what could only be described as a cry for help or somebody in distress i hear 
them experts was torturing and or unfortunately unaliving somebody while they're on the court TV. Do court TV producers have on headphones? Could they hear that? They could be... Could y'all send the popo over to that lady's house? It is a very, very clear, in my opinion, that she was either A, holding a hostage, B, doing something terrible to somebody because it was like a disembodied, far, a far off voice going, no, no. And I was like, the whole time, I, maybe they, I, I had an earbuds. So I can hear it very, very clearly in my earbuds. While the other experts were talking, I was like, wait, I need to conduct a complete investigation. And I need to see like which one of these little experts in the box has somebody screaming for help in the background. And then the last shot of the recap, they had this lady and she was like, blah, 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 legal stuff, legal stuff, legal stuff. And you hear, no, no, in the background. And I was like, it's that heifer. She's the unaliver. And then as, as I was like panicking and trying to remember her name and I was like going to write down her name and call 911, but 911 in that area. But I had to look up where she lived. And then it occurred to me, oh, that's too much trouble. I have a video to make this morning. I can't be reporting people to the popo when I have other things to do. That is when it occurred to me that might have been a cat. I, now listen, maybe it was a cat saying meow and not a human saying no, but I don't know. Those things are awful close. Also, I have come to understand about myself. I tend to see things through murder colored glasses. Now listen, if you are on this channel, there is an excellent, excellent chance that you too see things through murder colored glasses. Now, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying it's something that happens. If I see any time, Anytime somebody is unalive, and I'm telling you, I don't care if they were 104 and they died peacefully in their bed. I'm just like, mm, poisoning. Like, that is just the way my brain works. Just me? I know it's not just me. Every time, so I'm like, mm, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. They were sick, and they were in hospice, and whatever. That OJ? They say OJ was in hospice, child. I don't know. I mean, karma might have just came and got him out. Like, ain't none of my business what happened in that case. Um, and I, the dearly departed is, well, just departed, in my opinion. Look, in other true crime news, the Chad Daybell trial lumbers on. Oh, this trial is slow. Every now and then, though, they get a witness that's real good. And I'm like, okay, I'm leaning in. Now, all the police witnesses and stuff, and they were like, we saw terrible things. We smelled terrible things. Chad's a terrible person. Yes, yes, yes. We know all of that. Fine. Here's the thing, though. It was a couple of witnesses yesterday that I was like, oh, hold the phone. They had one police witness that was up there being exceptionally boring. And then um, Chad's lawyer stands up and is like, did you ever see an email where you see Chad saying, um, hey, let's murder the kids? And I think that uh, Chad's lawyer, was ex John Pryor, was expecting the witness to say, well, no. But the witness said, Yes. I was like, oh, wait, what? Now he's like, yeah, they talked in detail about the unfortunate unaliving of the kids. And I was like, oh, 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 John Pryor. Um, some tells me that ain't go how you thought that was going to go. And that, that went all the way to the left. And then they had David Warwick. You remember David Warwick from uh, the Lori Vallow trial? Let me catch you up. David Warwick was married to Melanie Fibb. I mean, Melanie Gibb. David, I believe, was single. No, I think David was married to another lady and Melanie was married to another man. But they had uh, come together. How come? If y'all are a religious group, why is all this fornication going on? I mean, I'm not deeply religious myself. In fact, I'm not religious at all. But I've read the Bible. I grew up in church. And you know what you're not supposed to be doing? Uchi and the coochie when you're not married. You're supposed to go and stand in front of a judge or your minister or somebody and get all the words said and do the marriage license. And These people are just dropping it low and spreading it. Oh, they just swapping gravy all over the place before marriage. And then... Here's the other thing, at least in my family, with my religious aunties and stuff, me and my husband were together for eight years before we got married, right? We had kids, we had a house, we've been together for years and years and years. If we stayed at the auntie's house, they was like, y'all sleeping in separate rooms. And I was like, okay, I don't agree, but I can respect that because I'm at their house. Lori, who's so, so religious, she's always at the temple. Oh, y'all, y'all not married? Y'all can go ahead and share a bedroom, no problem. Y'all married to other people? Sure, that's great. Go ahead and share a bedroom. What? 
I don't, maybe that's just the Baptist that make you sleep in a separate room. Or wait, I got family in Church of Christ. I got Baptist family. I got AME family. None of them is letting you sleep in the same room. Even the ones who don't go to church no more, you can't sleep in the same room. Look, in some families, I know they won't even let you sleep in the same house. Oh, it's a family reunion. All the men sleep in the aunt at Uncle So-and-So's house and all the women are sleeping in the aunt so-and-so. Nobody, I don't care if you're married or not. Nobody is touching nobody. They want none of the Uchi or the coochie happening under their roof, which I respect. I personally disagree, especially when I was young. I was like, we need to Uchi and Kuchi wherever we go. But okay, we might have to tip out to the car later. Child, I have gotten way off topic. Anyway, so I'm trying to understand how David was married to somebody else and Melanie was married to somebody else, but they are spending the night together in a room at Lori's house. But who is Lori to judge when she is married and Chad is married and the two of them are sneaking into each other's room doing a horizontal mambo? It's just nasty. I'm just saying. But they were like, oh, um... Even though here on this earthly realm, we'll steer married to other people. We went down to the temple um, to do our all of our religious work like you do. I don't, I, I'm curious as to what they do in the temple. I kind of want to know everything. There are YouTube channels that tell, but I need somebody to tell me specifically like, what y'all doing? What I know the outfits are like a little bit, um, they're different or whatever, but I, I, I want to know what y'all doing up in there. Anyway, um, you know what Chad and Laura were doing up in there? Getting married to each other. They were like, I promise you and you promise me, we're not going to worry about our spouses. Yes. Yes, we're married to other people. And yes, we were sealed for time and all eternity over in the temple. But for right now, me and you, we're officially married. Ta-da. Like, I, I don't think they were author. I think that was um an unauthorized use of temple resources. And they should leave, lose their temple recommend. See, I know Mormon things, y'all. I know lots and lots of Mormon things. Anyway, um... Also, that might have been a sin. As though the fornication was not enough of a sin. Like, the fake trick marriage was also a sin. And then Laurie's sitting up there in the temple like, So, I'm sitting here minding my own business. And Heavenly Father came to me. And Heavenly Mother. I didn't know that was a Heavenly Mother. Okay. Okay, that is very progressive of our Mormon friends. Okay, but maybe Lori made it up because she also made up like zombies and stuff. So who knows? Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother came to me and told me that me and um Chad, we are meant to be. And um, Chad used to be Jesus's BFF. And I was like the girlfriend of Jesus's BFF. And therefore we are married and we can live happily ever after together on this celestial plane. Also, the Lord told me that um, we are authorized to unfortunately unalive our respective spouses. Um, so be it. Amen. Praise be his name. I don't know what they say at the end of these crazy pronunciations. Because between me and you, quiet as is kept, I think they made all that up. I don't think all the Mormon church leaders or whatever agree with them or disagree with them. You know what I don't think they are? Pro unaliving. I don't. Mm-mm. I don't care how liberal your church is. And there's some very liberal churches out there. I don't think any of them are like, okay, you can get married to this person who's already married to somebody else. And then later in your free time, when you got a little, little spare time, a little weekend or something, you can unfortunately unalive your spouse and your kids. That That's not a thing. That's absolutely not a thing. As far as I'm concerned, although I'm no expert. Also, David Warwick, see, I bring it right back. I bring it right, I can get off topic, but I bring it right on back. David Warwick, Melanie Gibbs, lover turned husband, was a part of this group. And Chad was at least smart enough to know, mm, the men might push back on some of this foolishness and nonsense. And so I might have to leave them to the outer edge and only like the truly, truly weak-minded. Um, in this case, those weak-minded happen to be mostly women and Alex. Like, I don't know if they were brainwashed because I don't even think a wash was now. A light rinse, a brain light rinse. And they were like, mm-hmm, zombies, yes. Uh, all of this other weird hoodoo and unfortunate unalive things. And what, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds great to me. We're going to cast out some devils. Then we're going to unalive some people. And then we're going to go have lunch. I, I don't know what these people's philosophy was. But anyway, David Warwick was like, yeah, nah, I, I, I'm not with this. I'm not with this. And they went to a park one time and they were like, oh, do you see the beautiful building? And David was like, all I see is grass and trees. And they were like, no, no, no. The beautiful, it's a brick building. It has archways and whatever. And David was like, 
Are, are y'all suckers kidding me? I, it, it's just grass. It's, you mean that bunny that's hopping along? They were like, dang. We're not going to get David to go along with the madness. So uh, he he can't be a part of the inner circle. And then also yesterday, um, some text messages came out. Now listen, let us be abundantly clear. Chad and Lori's text messages back and forth to each other were supremely cringy and nasty. Oh, they were nasty. It just, mm, the cringe and the nasty. You know what you don't want to know about? The middle-aged uchi and coochieing of uh, uh, the, the 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 intimate ooching and cooching of middle-aged people. No, 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 especially Chad. But did his chins jiggle when he? I, I don't. I can't. I can't. Anyway, so um, when they would have fights, this is when the crazy would get extra strength. Chad would be like, "Lori, you're not speaking to me," and she would be like, "I'm ignoring. I'm ignoring." And he would text her real furiously. I was just speaking to your dead grandpa because you know I can speak to the unalive. Your dead grandpa says he's really mad at you for not talking to me. Hmm. Wouldn't the dead grandpa want her to talk to the man that she was legally married to? Because something tells me dead grandpa on the other side of glory is not like, oh, this marshmallow that you've been messing with on the side that your husband don't know nothing about. Yeah, you should get with him. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not a thing, Chad. But because she had had that light rinse on her brain, she was like, okay, if grandpa said, then all right, um, psst, Lori, he made that up because your dead grandpa, he strongly disagrees. But I'm like, okay, these people are deeply, deeply weird. And then Lori, when Chad was mad at her, she was like, mm. He's not speaking to me. How will I get him back? Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to send him a bikini pic. And she would be like, surprises away. And he would be like, boobs. I'm seduced by the lady lumps. You know, listen, Tammy was not letting him motorboat her. I don't, I, I don't care how long they were married. I don't care what the situation was. Tammy, the librarian, she knew the Dewey Decimal System. She wore glasses. She was shushing kids over there at the library. She was not, Chad... You cannot blah, 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 me. Mm -mm. You cannot. You cannot do it. Lori, on the other hand, was like, come here, big boy. And so he was like, I must go. This whole story is crazy. This whole entire situation is nuts. This trial gets on my nerves. I can hardly wait to see what happens tomorrow. Also, I heard that um, there's a jury that's been seated in the Karen Reed trial. And to that, I say, I don't know if I'm going to be talking about that. Because all of those people, mm -mm, mm -mm, people have big, big, very strong emotions about the Karen Reed trial. And yes, I know stuff about the trial, but not enough to really like weigh in. I know there's a missing dog named Chloe. Where did Chloe go? And a, a, some policeman, a policeman who sold his house. And to be abundantly clear, please don't tell me. I don't want to know about the trial. If something interesting happens, of course, I will be here to gossip unto you. But other than that, not, not, not. Keep that Karen Reed mess off my page. Unless I ask for something. Now, if I ask for something, then please, I'm like, wait, who is this guy and what happened or whatever? But for the most part, nope, 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 nope. Folks over there losing their mind and trying to unfortunately unalive each other, fighting with each other on the internet. No, thank you. We this is a place of love and light and cults and cats, other stuff like that. All right, listen, I need to go get ready for work. I got, listen, this gorgeousness that I think I got off Amazon, um, I can't wear this to work. I got to get my, I got, I got Zoom calls and stuff today. You go get ready. Get on with the rest of your day. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.